Everybody, it's Andrew Rafael and John Jangle coming to you from the Dream Plan Retire Studio here in Scottsdale. And John, today our video is going to cover a big topic. A lot of questions we're getting from clients, from prospective clients. What is it? It's an election year. Aha. Yeah. Election year. It is the spring of 2024. So election year brings a lot, especially in this time frame that we're in, a lot of anxiety. Absolutely. And, um, you know, sometimes there's a lot of specific questions around an election year, but a lot of times we're meeting with clients and they'll just be a general comment of, oh, it, and it's an election year without any real specifics there. Mm -hmm. And it's usually, you know, a negative connotation. So we thought we'd dig in a little bit today and get into some of the specifics to maybe alleviate some of that anxiety. Wonderful. Yeah. And um, one of the, the biggest things we hear is, you know, what's the impact? What is it going to do for me? And these are from clients that some we've been working with for well over a decade. Yeah. And these are from potentially, you know, new clients or just out on the street. You know, if you're having a cocktail with somebody, they hear you're in the financial advisory uh, space. What does it mean for me, John? So let's break that down. And we're going to talk a, a high level here and try to tune out the noise of what an election, especially here in 2024, may mean, and ultimately some actionable items that we can all take to make sure we stay on track. Right, right, absolutely. Um, so obviously, we want to look at some of the historical data today, and just say, if we look back, what role has an election year played in terms of my investments, my planning, the overall economy, so on and so forth. So we're going to dig into a little bit of that today as well. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is, as we look at you know, who ultimately will take control of the White House. And it isn't just that easy, though, when we look at who is going to be the president. There's many other factors. What is what's Congress look like? Yeah. Right. So, you know, the, the simplistic version of if if the Republicans win the White House, one of the things they're going to most likely try to push through is the uh, and a big thing we'll talk about today is the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that was enacted uh, about six years ago. And yeah. it's been a real big benefit for a lot of people, not just the wealthy. That is supposed to expire when? So after 2025, so 2026, no changes are made. We're reverting back to these old, less advantageous rates, also standard deduction getting cut in half. So there's a lot of changes potentially that could be coming. That's right. And that's where a, a lot of uh, you out there that have been working with us, we've been you know, working this last few years to take advantage of that. So obviously, Republicans, um, they're, they're, one of their key is let's lower taxes, let's spur growth and focus on businesses and cutting taxes across the board because it will have, quote unquote, that that trickle down effect. Yeah. yeah. What happens if uh, we have the, the Democrats continue with uh, the White House? What normally are they trying to push through? Yeah, normally it is uh, obviously a higher tax rate environment in that regime, um, maybe less advantageous for for business growth. Um, but there's also, uh, you know, the deficit that we have to contend with as well, or maybe not. Um, that's something that, you know, Washington seems to ignore uh, more often than not as well. So, um you know, conventional wisdom would say, yeah, we're going to be going into a higher tax rate environment if Democrats get into office yeah. kind of across the board. But it's not always that cut and dry. No, not a guarantee, especially if we do have a divided Congress, which ultimately, as we'll look at some slides later, um, a, you know, a divided Congress can be a, a benefit for the overall economic environment, because yeah. sometimes when they can't do anything, it's a good thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like for those of you who have a plan by Making a lot of changes to a financial plan or your investments may not be the the best scenario for long term. It usually isn't, right? right. Staying the course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, when we think of this, uh, a lot of we get is, well, what type of investments and what should I do with my plan? Because it's an election year. Well, historically, even though it feels that it's going to be more volatile, and again, we're getting news fed to us 24 7 all over the place. It's not like, 20 years ago where it'd be you got a couple you know you have maybe 20 
different news stations. Now it's a thousand plus plus online TikTok. and social media. Yeah. And, so it's coming yeah, at you. It's yeah. bombarding you. But you know, if we look historically, um, volatility, and that's one way we can we can the simple way to look at it is the VIX index, right? Yeah. Um, well, if we look at the the slide that we'll bring up uh, in in uh, in in today. The, um, you know, if we look non-election years versus election years, the average volatility since 2000, it's very comparable, right? Yeah. I think it's like 19 versus 22. Yeah. Doesn't move the needle that much. Right. And when we look at some of the things that have happened in election years that maybe weren't tied actually to the election per se, but think back to, to 2000, we had the dot-com. Absolutely. Bubble. Yeah. yeah. It burst. Yeah. And then a few years later. 2008 we've got subprime mortgage crisis that then leads to the great recession and then maybe it's uh too soon but recent memory 2020 covid covid so i think there's a trap that maybe we're we're all guilty at some point because we are fed all of this news to say it's an election year and we look back historically and we maybe in more recent memory have some of these broader economic events that coincide with an election year that really didn't have anything to do with the election. And we say, wow, it was really volatile in those years. It must have been because of the election. And that's maybe too narrow of a focus. Right. And it, exactly. And so, you know, by thinking short term versus long term, it's always going to get you into trouble. Yeah. You know, this other uh, chart we'll pull up here, the growth of uh, hypothetical investment uh, over the last, I think since 1933, what this shows is, you know, it ultimately doesn't matter if it's Republican or Democrat who's leading the charge. Ultimately, this chart will show that there's just long term, there is growth, right? right. Because we have built um, the, the the economy and now a global economy, but it's based off of continued growth. Now, along that way, there's always going to be recessions. It doesn't even have to be an election year for a recession. And could a recession be looming, whether it's it's Biden or Trump? Of course, right? If Trump wins, he takes over the reins and if Biden wins, he continues on. But yeah. ultimately, you could see from this chart here that long term, we're always going, well, unless the world comes to an end <laughs> or yeah. that, you know, the you know, our whole, or, or just the free world, the free trade isn't there. You know, the growth is going to be there regardless of who is in power. Right. And I think that comes back to planning that we always emphasize on with having you know, really a clear timeline and a purpose for your finances. So if you're 45 years old and you're 15 to 20 years away from retirement and you've got your retirement assets and you're contributing to that and you're in more of that growth mode, you really, not that you don't want to pay attention to what's going on with those investments, but you really have to focus on the long term. If you're in a different situation where you are retired and you need to draw from those investments, you obviously hopefully have already done some planning to add some safety into that portfolio. So whether there's volatility because or, or of an election or some other thing that's going on in the market like a recession, um, you know, you, part of your assets are insulated so you can rely on that for income as well. So what we're trying to emphasize is you should have a game plan set up already, depending on where you are at your stage of life and planning. It kind of ignores what's going on with the election and just takes into consideration all of those more controllable aspects of your plan. So taxes, the amount of risk you have, where you're going to generate income from. And maybe you just need to make small tweaks here and there, but an election shouldn't be you know, the end all be all to influencing what kind of decisions you make moving yeah. forward. And that's, that's great advice. Yeah. What we can control if we think of things right now, and even though policy changes will happen depending upon who is in power, what we know right now is tax rates are low yeah. and they're supposed to stay low into 2025. We can't predict what's going to happen in 2026, but what we do know is that if we have low tax brackets right now, we have higher standard deductions, those of you that are getting closer to retirement, there's some opportune time for you to take advantage of that. And that's whether it be looking at Roth conversions, understanding the tax brackets or funding instead of all your money into a pre-tax 401k portion. Maybe you look and say, I'm going to put some or all of it in the post-tax because I know most likely tax rates will be higher no matter who is in power just because of the deficit that we're in. So those are things we can control. The other thing is, and looking at it, not just like you said, based on making decisions because the election 
it's fundamentals. You know, one of the things we want to look at is, yes, inflation was heavy a few years ago. It's starting to rein in a little bit. So we're in that like Goldilocks type situation where it's not too too great, not too bad. Fed has done a, a pretty good job of, of reining that in, regardless if they were too slow in figuring out what was happening with all the money that was put into the system. Bottom line, though, is that there is a lot of, of opportunity in fixed income and other safer type of investments. So the one thing we can control is how much risk that we're taking in our overall plan. And that's something where, although the markets are at these quote unquote all time highs, um, we, a lot of it has been based off of some tech companies that have been driving that. But what we don't want to do is see, okay, here are the s and at these all time highs, even though it's not that much higher than it was 18 months ago. Right. It's now, okay, I'm going to go chase return because my neighbor over here bought NVIDIA, you know, 18 months ago and has crushed it. Well, Ultimately, if we start chasing returns, now we're taking on additional risk that might not represent what you need in your plan. Yeah. So that goes back to staying the course, but also then, like you said, optimizing and tweaking if we can take advantage of fundamentals and make sure that we're able to get, okay, we can get higher dividend yields now with less risk, but we don't want to go chasing. Right. And, and then we also don't want to do is as an election year, I got to go move everything from a good plan into all this safety because ultimately you're going to miss out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, it's really having that balance and that perspective um, and, and also realizing too, you know, as we're watching the news and we see candidates on the campaign trail and they're making all of these promises, you know, the way our political system is set up is, is one that it's not easy to, to turn a big ship quickly. Right. And that was specifically designed that way. So we have all of these policy promises that are meant to entice and, and invigorate voters for a specific candidate. But realistically, they can't, you know, there's not that much power consolidated in any one person to make these sweeping changes to the way our economy works, to the way the tax code works. Now, and there's always these constants running underneath, like what we've seen with the SECURE Act as well, where we had SECURE Act, uh, you know, the first version and 2.0, that's kind of... Um, you know, it doesn't take into account who's in the Oval Office. That is Congress and the IRS looking at different ways to generate more tax revenue due to spending. So those are all things to keep in, in consideration, too. If it's like, well, this person said they're going to do all of this, and I think it's going to impact my retirement account this way, it's probably not going to, you know, the magnitude of those changes aren't really probably going to be as high as what somebody is saying. Again, it's talking points to, to try and get energy up for and collect votes for that right. candidate. Yeah. That's it. And, um, you know, for, for those of you that, you know, are looking at the election and feeling some trepidation, that actually can be a benefit because you might not have looked at it, you may not even have a plan, or you might not have looked at your plan in a number of years. So if something like fear and anxiety gets you to take a step back and get a, a maybe a second opinion on, on your current plan, or, you know, you're a client of Baintree in our review meetings, we're going to sit down and go through, hey, are we on track with things? But if you're out there on your own or really don't have a financial plan, this is a, a good time to look and say, okay, I've got these fears. Is it real? And am I currently on track with where I need to be? Because five years ago is a lot different than now, both your age-wise and milestones and when you're going to potentially retire and also there's the economic conditions. And we see that all too often that people just put their head in the sand. And especially when things are moving along pretty good, it's okay, I'm going to be I'm fine, I'm fine. And they're not taking into account all the variables. Well, and that's, a, that's a great point, too, because it looks like we're going to have the same two presidential candidates that we did on the, the last election. So fundamentally, that has not changed. But the economy's in a much different position than it was in the last election cycle. So right there, you know, just to emphasize that point that we've got the same candidates that we had, you know, four years ago, but interest rates are way different. Inflation is way different. There's all of these other factors that run underneath what's going on in an election that you should really be paying attention to more so than what's going, you know, who you're voting for, who yeah. other people are voting for. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. You know, sometimes it's good to just uh, not completely tune out, but try to tune out the noise as best you can, because uh, like you indicated earlier, a lot of what's said on the uh, from the, the politicians when they're on the, the, the train to November, it's just said in 
jest of, hey, we want to, we got to get this group over here. These independents, they're going to jump here because I said this, but then inevitably nothing a lot of times happens. It yeah. doesn't happen that quick. Yeah. But we do know that, um, you know, from, from both sides, um, if there is a divided Congress, probably going to be a better thing. Again, we can't predict that, but that o- overall, and uh, if we look, I think from the standpoint of the S&P performance, um, when there is a, depending upon if it's Democrat or Republican, if there's a divided Congress versus if one's in, in power, at full power, it is historically better to right. have, have a split Congress. Split Congress, yep. right? And so again, that uh, that's something we can't control. We don't know how it's going to go down, but that would be a, a, a real big benefit. Um, so a couple of actionable items that I think we can look at right now here in 2024, because um, things we can control, your tax destiny. So as tax rates... Right now, we can't predict that they're going to be higher in, in 2026 with 100% guarantee, but most likely they're going to be higher. So let's take a look and work with your, if you're, uh, again, you've got an advisor, make sure you're working with the advisor and your CPA, but just make sure you're taking advantage of all the things that are out there and thinking about proactive type planning there and yeah. long-term planning and not just, a lot of times CPAs are a lot, they're great at what they do, but they're more so looking at how can I save you taxes right now? Or they're history teachers and they just say, what did you do in 2023? And they're trying to do all these things to just think of, I just saved you the most amount of taxes right now without thinking of the repercussions to you and your plan five years, 10 years, 15 years out. And those are the type of things that we we can have these little wins. And those little wins become larger wins over the course of time. Plus they give you a peace of mind that, hey, I'm being proactive in this type of planning. So sure. I think tax rates, taking advantage of that, what are some other things that we could look at right now if, if I'm uh, out there listening or watching this and uh, I'm a do-it-yourselfer? Yeah, I mean, I think you uh, you kind of hit on it a little bit before, but there's assets that have really been undervalued for a long time, you know, specifically in fixed income. And due to some policy changes, there's a lot more opportunity to maybe generate the types of returns you need to have a sustainable plan while taking less risk overall. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, there's a lot more tools available to the average investor than there there were back in 2020 and 2021 when interest rates were very low and a lot of money was being forced into the stock market that maybe then forced investors to take more risk than they would otherwise be comfortable with to try and you know get a decent rate of return. And also on that end too, there is um, even though equities have usually more risk than fixed income, even though we didn't see that in 2022, but historically, fixed income is going to most likely have less risk right. than, than equities. But there's also uh, a lot of these companies now because uh, cash and, and inflation have, have hit this point we haven't seen in 20 years, looking at good generating revenue net income companies that are paying dividends so there's a lot of dividends out there too that are you know paying five five and a half percent without having to take a huge amount of risk meaning not having to buy junk bonds and things of that nature so those are things that you let those continue to ride and reinvest and you get a good tax deduction or on the tax status of those as qualified dividends that can be a little bit better because of how they're taxed versus how some of the bond income is taxed as well. Right. So those are things that, that we could also help you look at it as well. Um, so I think as we, we end today, obviously nobody can predict where things are going, but what we don't want to do is let our emotions take the best of us and make these knee jerk reactions based off of something that maybe a poll came out and said, this is going to happen versus that. Or somebody says something that you think is against what you fully believe. Yeah. All of a sudden you go and derail your plan. Yeah. Don't make that mistake. I know. Just get out there and vote, have your plan and, uh, you know, be, uh, be able to make changes when you need to, but don't let any one variable kind of make, make a change that you don't need to. Yeah. And and just as we end on a, you know, just the, it doesn't matter. I know this is emotional and I know this election will be very emotional for a lot of people, but ultimately the U S is, you know, the greatest nation out there, the best economy out there. And we have to look at that and focus on optimism and know that we're going to have a better place two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, no matter what the policymakers do, the, the just resolve of this union of the people in this country, we have to believe in that and know that we're going to be better off this, uh, these next X amount of years, yeah. growth, abundance. Yeah. Don't, th- don't be scared. So uh, I know we didn't 
provide you a prediction. We weren't going to do that, but high level tips and strategies of how you can stay calm during this turbulent 2024 election that is just about to get started. So as we always say, get a plan, stick to the plan, and keep your emotions at bay. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah. Well, found this video uh, that was beneficial. Just uh, hit the subscribe button because John and I are going to be doing a lot more of these. If you have questions, just uh, reach out to us below the video, below the show notes here will be a way to contact us if you have specific questions about your plan or you need to get a second opinion or just want to uh, wrap with us. This is what we live and breathe over here. So we appreciate all of you. Happy planning, everybody. We'll see you real soon. Take care.